Hi everyone, Victoria Bain here. I'm going to do something that I haven't done before and that's to um, post a video of um, some of the projects that I'm making, some of the uh, historical dresses. Uh, I always post pictures of the things I'm working on but I thought a video might be a little more fun since a lot of people um, are starting to follow my projects. Um, today I'm working on a couple of things. I have a uh, Regency dress order uh, to uh, start on uh, for author uh, Darcy Burke and we found some really pretty fabric. Uh, if if uh, somebody requests a dress from me I have a huge stash of beautiful fabrics that maybe I'll show you but um, also I, I try to customize to what the person wants so uh, I'll go to the fabric store and maybe text pictures back and forth but we found some really cute fabric to do a Regency dress um, also, I wanted to do a hat for myself. Um, a lot of people underestimate the uh, effect of a hat. Now, hats are very important historically. Women wore, men and women wore hats right up until about, what, the 1960s. Uh, hats were an essential part of uh, a wardrobe, so, and they definitely make a fashion statement. So, um, I've made uh, several hats in the past. I, or trim several hats. Sometimes I find hats in a thrift shop or Walmart or whatever and I'll see something that I think I can give a little historical flair to and I might just trim the hat. Um, here's one I made recently. I'll show you. I love this uh, and again it uh, really uh, works for the outfit. So here's the Regency outfit I just made and here is the lovely bonnet. Um, that I took a straw bonnet and I completely covered it in the matching taffeta and added uh, trim and roses to it. And that completes my uh, Regency Ensemble that I'm really excited to wear at HRR, Historical Romance Retreat. So here's a, a picture of the outfit. It's a, it's a two-piece. It's a dress and a redding goat and a hat. So it's actually a three-piece. So um, I'm planning in the near future, let me see if I can position this camera back. I'm planning in the near future to attempt uh, a Georgia, a late Georgian zone front gown. Um, those were worn in the latter part of the 18th century. And a lot of the time they wore the big fufu, um, like a mod cap, a, a big cap. And I found a simple, simple pattern for one. Um, this is a, a Simplicity Retro Costume Collection. This is a Regency dress pattern, but uh, I may make this dress. Actually, I may model Darcy's dress after this. Uh, but what I was interested for me is see this little uh, bonnet here, this cap. So I'm going to make this out of some beautiful um, burgundy colored silk. Uh, instead of white, I want to do silk because the uh, dress I'm going to make is uh, a beautiful em burgundy embroidered silk. So uh, I'm gonna try to make this hat. So I'll post uh, pictures as I go, but it, the pattern couldn't be simpler. So even you guys that have never sewn before, if you can just operate a sewing machine, you, you should be able to make this cap. Here's the pattern. I mean, it is one piece, it's a big circle. Um, so I have it laid out here on my um, silk. I have to cut two of these, so you want to have the fabric perfectly lined up, and if I was really meticulous, I would have ironed my fabric, but I'm not that meticulous. <laughs> I'll just smooth it out. So um, I'm going to cut two pieces, and then I'm going to start sewing. So this is a project I should be able to complete in less than an hour. So I'll uh, give you some more progress shortly. Hi everyone, I'm back again. Here uh, is my um, two layers of silk for my hat, uh, for my cap that I plan to make. Uh, here's a pretty hat in the background. Uh, that's this white one. I'm, I'm squirreling on you here. This white one was a hat I found. I think I got it at Target or somewhere, and uh, I decorated it with feathers and flowers and ribbon. So um, you can do a lot with hats. Um, and that will make a, a nice Edwardian uh addition to an Edwardian dress. So anyway, back to the project I'm working on. So this is two layers of silk. Um, silk wrinkles really badly. You usually have to reinforce it with another fabric. 
I'm going to see how it goes. I might have to cut a third layer of something else and uh, basically fuse it to the silk to give it more support, but we'll see how it goes. The other thing I'm going to do is I don't want my um, cap to be too plain Jane, so I um, drew out um, some strips of fabric, the same fabric, uh, an inch and a half wide. There's two layers, uh, four pieces. I hope that'll be enough. I want to make a ruffle to maybe go around uh, the edge of the uh, cap. So I'm going to cut these strips out with a rotary cutter. Uh, I'm going to use my serger to finish. This is optional. This is just something I want to do to make the hat a little fancier, but you don't have to add the ruffle. Um, so I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to finish the edges. I'm going to make a ruffle and then uh, I'll uh, start sewing the hat. So I'll be back again shortly. Okay, everybody, more progress on my um, Georgian slash Regency silk cap. Um, for this pattern, I want to make clear, uh, for this cap, you do not need to use a pattern. All you need to do is cut out a 26 inch in diameter circle of uh, fabric, two layers of fabric. This is a 26 inch circle. You don't need a pattern to do this. So um, just wanted to make sure that anyone can make this cap. Uh, this is my first go. I've never made one before, so I'm I'm showing you as I'm learning myself, but it's, it's pretty simple. So um, if I were making this out of white cotton or something, you know, more simple than silk, um, I would probably, if I did this in white, I would probably just buy some white lace trim at the fabric store. Um, I'll show you some examples. Here's all kinds of different. Here's an eyelet trim. Uh, that's a little too wide, but you'd want uh, some kind of a little narrow trim that you could just sew on. You don't have to make the trim, uh, but since I didn't have any ready-made trim to match the silk, I made my own. So what I did, I showed you earlier, I was going to cut out these strips of fabric. So I cut out, I ended up cutting out six 24-inch um, long strips of the same fabric. And I sewed them together to make basically a long piece of ribbon. You see, I finished the edges with my serger. So it looks like ribbon. This is, uh, this is the same silk. But I only did this, uh, made my own trim because uh, I couldn't find anything to match this exactly. But this is you know, more advanced and more trouble than most of you would have to, to do. So I am ready to sew uh, my cap. I pinned uh, the edges of the fabric, so I'm just gonna sew these together all the way around. And I just need to leave an opening maybe four to six inches wide for me to turn this um, these two pieces of fabric inside out when I'm done sewing them. And then I'll probably have to Close that up by hand. Actually, I probably won't have to because I'm going to be putting this ribbon on top of it so it'll hide uh, hide the raw edge. Maybe I'll just finish it with my serger or something. So I'm going to sew this now. Um, I'll bring this over to my machine. And let's see if I can uh, prop, my, uh, prop my camera up. I do not have an expensive sewing machine. This is actually a little nicer than the first one I started with. This is a Singer Quantum Stylist. Uh, it's a couple hundred bucks. But the, the one I started with is right behind me uh, there. Uh, that's a Brother. Uh, I'm not sure the model, but it's a really basic sewing machine. I bought it on Amazon for like 88 bucks. And I made probably 20, my first 20 or 30 dresses with that machine. It's a great little machine. It's not expensive. If you want to learn how to sew, I highly recommend it. Um, my husband bought me a little bit more advanced machine. This one has a lot of fancy stitches and everything that I haven't really learned how to use. So I'm not going to bore you with stitching this. Um, I'll come back to you shortly. So now I stitched this big circle, 20 in, 26 inch circle of fabric, and I turned it right side out. Here's the opening I left to turn it right side out. Now I have my iron here. I'm going to press this before I go to the next step. Okay, so I just did um, two rows of gathering stitches all the way around. Um, if these were uh, at the uh, four and a half setting for gathering, 
but uh, I could have made this channel a little bit wider and used a smaller stitch length and then it would have made a channel for my rib ribbon or my elastic. But I'm going to try the gathering first. If that doesn't look right, then I'll just pull out the gathering stitches and make the channel in the normal way. I just wanted to try this to see if it would work. <laughs> 